like that to the press. I might have some trouble with that. A lot of people think you're as dangerous as the Joker. <laughs> He's psychotic. Some people say the same thing about you. What people? Well, I mean, let's face it. You're not exactly normal, are you? listening to Batman on film chapter by chapter Batman 89 it continues friends and I'm excited for you guys to join us my name is Justin Kowalski I'm a Batman on film legacy member and I'm joined today by uh man two people that haven't been on chapter by chapter in a minute uh first I'm gonna bring on Mr. Garrett Grev he's been using brand X all morning guys Garrett how are you doing <laughs> yeah that's yeah you know, I, only my hairdresser knows for sure. Yeah, and so who knows? I think I'm doing okay now. I'm really glad to be here. It, uh, it's been a little while since I was on a podcast. And with this show in particular, I really enjoyed listening to. But this segment, I was like, if I can get on this segment, I'm going to be hyped. So glad to be here with you. Yeah, this this is this is a hot seat. This was a, a very uh, popular segment to get in on. It. And so I'm glad you joined us today for the big duke all right and then finally uh we have our editor-in-chief we have uh the man from texas himself we have mr bill jet ramey bill welcome to your show <laughs> well th no thanks for having me on i appreciate it you know i do get y'all let me do the social hour so i appreciate all that but yeah this is one i, I asked just i said kind of want to do this this segment I like for everybody else to get involved as much as possible. So I don't want to have to be on every, every show we have and all that. So but I said, this one I kind of like and, uh, or this, this particular part of the movie. So yeah, I'm yeah. glad, uh, glad to be here and glad we're doing it. Us three. Yeah. It's going to be, I think it's going to be fun. Uh, it's interesting. This is a real short segment too. So if you're following along, uh, with us guys, you can hit, uh, 112 and 117 it were about a five minute segment of film uh the last episode we did a a bigger chunk we did uh about you know 15 minutes of, of footage this movie's really uh segmented really weird so there's it, it's for this there's not really a great chapter so we've been making it up as we go which make which makes the most sense and so uh this uh segment of the film is typically if referred to as descent into mystery and so uh there we go, guys. So let's jump on in uh, to Batman 89, one of the greatest Batman films ever created. All right, you guys. So uh, what takes place is this is right after uh, Batman rescues Vicky from the Flugelheim. They have some altercations in the streets. And this segment of film starts right when uh, Batman uh, he takes care of some bad guys. Vicky's climbing down the uh, fire escape and... Uh, he calls the Batmobile over. He says shields and it comes over and they get into the back cave. I mean, to the, uh, the Batmobile. So, uh, what are your thoughts, Bill? Give us, give us your, 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 your thoughts and your impressions on this scene. Well, we'll get into it. The music comes to mind. First of all, you know, from leaving from Gotham, getting to the bat cave. And secondly, to me, it is, uh, it is Keaton's eye acting. It's a master class. Especially, I mean, in the Batmobile and in the Batcave with Vicky. And it's probably like my main uh, evidence I, I will tur turn to whenever I say I don't want lenses on on the Batcal because I like the actor being able to use use his eyes. And, it, and oh, yeah. I think it goes it goes back to Keaton in Batman 89. And this scene is just it's 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 great. I love watching it because just. What he does with just with his eyes in this is is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, you got you got some thoughts on on Batman and his eyes. Yeah, you know, I think well, one, I have sort of jokingly taken on the position of like I really want lenses in the cowl. <laughs> yes. Now, 
I I don't want lenses in the cowl in future movies all the time. Even you know, particularly, I don't think it makes a lot of sense in the Batman. You know, the yeah. Pattinson Reeves Batman. Um, but at times, I just kind of like the nod, right? I like the nod of the comic book. They can go up, come down, but I do think the acting through the movement of the eye is super important. And you know, related to this scene is just there's a real dearth of dialogue. You know, there's not a lot of written words that are showing up here. I'd be really interested to hear, you know, what the um, Burton's direction looked like through this scene because it's it's much more atmospheric than anything else. And when I think of like Burton, I, you guys know, and probably listeners to the show know my feelings on Batman Returns. That's too much Burton for me. Too much Burton. Hey, we gave Burton too much room, and he went a little nuts. This to me is the right st- distillation of Burton, particularly if yeah. you think about like the Batmobile driving through these rows of trees and just the long spindly nature and like the way the brand, like it feels like Burton's aesthetic, but not taken to his sort of like stop motion cartoonish extreme. And I just feel like it fits so incredibly well with establishing, you know, in, in descent into mystery, you know, the name taken from the Elfman score here, like it really does a nice job of building this intrigue and this mystery of saying like, where are we going? What are we doing? What is this relationship becoming? Why are we going where we're going? And from the lighting to the, the map background as the Batmobile is driving through, it just all very much creates this like semi foreboding sense to the scene, which is really, really powerful. It's, I think it's one of the reasons, if not the reason why, this very short segment of the film gets as much conversation as it does. So it's a, it's not just the sort of the facial acting, but it's the art direction and the production aesthetic that really came together to make something special here. Yeah, I, I, dude, I, I think you nailed my thoughts exactly. I, I wrote, I wrote that this is probably one of the most aesthetically accurate Batman scenes in film. Uh, I think it just mm. hits. It, it, I think it just hits the tone. It's not. Uh, it just feels authentic to Batman. That I I can't shake that that scene. Um, Bill, you talking about the eyes? You're 100 correct because uh, you wouldn't get that awesome. You, you get that side eye like Batman. I mean, he can't turn his neck. So okay, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> like, let's forget he can't turn his neck. But he gives Vicky this like side eye, and it's so cool because it's so it's so off putting. Like, imagine I, this chick. She, she has no idea who this yeah. guy is, right? And she's trying, lo- she's looking. Oh man. That's I wrote that down and and Garrett brought up a great point <clears throat> about Burton's direction, especially in that bat in the Batmobile, that scene, because yeah. you know, Vicky says a few things, you know, where are we going? Yeah. Um, but most of it is is Kim Bassinger, you know, she's looking, you know, and she's kind of shifting her position in the batmobile and trying to get you could to get a better look at him yeah you know and he get and he does he gets you know that that side eye and then puts on the light to, so she yeah the light I love the yeah. light the light's is so my favorite great. part like at but, some point alfred yeah like, hey sir you need a light <laughs> yeah hey you know if you ever have a passenger in this thing <laughs> and you're trying to figure out who you really are it'd be super <laughs> helpful if you had a bright spotlight that could blind them <laughs> as you're driving down the road like that's Good thought, Alfred. Yeah, we'll do that. So I was thinking, and I was even thinking while I was watching it again this morning, that I was like, I wonder what Burton is telling them. Yeah. Right. You know, while this, and then Garrett brought it, and I didn't think about it like Garrett did enough to write it down, but I did, that did come through my mind. And then Garrett brought it up, and I was like, yeah, that's really. Because it's not, they're, they're not stuff. getting, I think about like the actors, right, getting ready for the scene. You know, like learning my dialogue, what's my approach to the character? And I'm so curious. And I, I've got it saved someplace, the script, the shooting script for 89. Like I would love to go back and look. I probably should have. A good, a good podcast guest would have done this to see like what is the instruction on the written page? Because it feels like it has to be more of um a conversation about feeling and where the different mm-hmm. characters are coming from. Throughout the scene, and it, 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 it carries on sort of right into the next scene, kind of depending on where we cut the conversation. But also in the previous scene, Justin, that you covered with Lauer on the last episode of of Chapter by Chapter, Vicky and Bruce or Batman are are sort of engaged in a little bit of this cat and mouse game, right? 
Yeah. Vicky is trying to understand who and what Batman is. And Batman is trying to keep her at a distance. Like there's, there's obviously this pull, there's obviously the relationship between Bruce and Vicky, but there's, there's also this component of how Batman wants to utilize Vicky with information to the press that even she calls out he could have done otherwise, but he's trying to keep her at this distance. And I think what's really smart, Justin, you called this out. We know any fan of Batman and the Batman movies knows that Keaton couldn't move his neck and head in this costume, but they utilize it in a really smart way that plays into this. I'm going to keep you from seeing who I am or getting too close to me. So it's the side eye look, but you think about it. If he were to turn to look at somebody in the way we would turn to look at someone now, Mm -hmm. she's got a better up close shot of his face. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and then later in the cave, he sort of has these big sweeping motions that keeps her at his backside. So she can't be up close and see his face. And every time she moves a bit closer, he moves a bit further away. And Keaton is really good. And Burton is a super talented director to think about. And this is where I was saying, what's the direction? What's the character motivation? How does it play into where these characters are as people? Vicky's trying to get close and Bruce is trying to, to, to be distant. He's maintaining yeah. that aloof nature that we see as Bruce and this hyper um, secretive uh, nature that we see as Batman. Like that's a core character thing. That's not yeah. just uh that's not just a, how you write out the script. It's coming from the place of who these characters are inside. It's genius. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's all yep. direction. Brood. <laughs> you brood. Yeah, and be distant. Yeah, yep. it, it's cool because Vicky in this short part, she gets from like, she gets very like inquisitive. She's looking, and at some point, like again, like when he hits that light, it just becomes like, what's going on? Like almost. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. I don't think she. I don't know if she's like, like scared, but she definitely like, what the? I'm being. I'm being kidnapped essentially, yeah. right? So she goes through this wave of like, of like, scared to like curious to like i give up i, I don't what's what's next you know and it's so... almost like uh <laughs> like at that last with the light it's like she's like okay whatever and just kind of you know yeah. you know yeah. falls to the slumps in a way and just oh, okay whatever yeah. and batman here like, like to it's i don't like doing the comparison to like different films because this is this is what 89 is a different beast but if you do compare it a little bit to when when bale has katie holmes in the the batmobile he cares about her like he's checking on her the whole time right he's just like you know hold on and like you know but (laughs) but it's like he's almost yeah he's he's he loves her yes yeah bruce he's not batman in that in that moment even though he's in the the cape and cow yeah, you know, yeah, Keaton Keaton is is like, yeah. So Keith, I love you guys because you think right? about these things the way I think about. Like, yeah. I literally, as I was watching this and getting ready for it, I'm like, I don't know that I need to do it because this is '89. But like, the comparison point to begins is so on point. And again, it comes back to the nature of these characters and how Burton and the actors have worked together to present them. This Bruce is detached and aloof, yeah. and it's about and in the relationship with Vicky is about sort of recovering a human interaction that he we are left to assume has yeah. been almost entirely devoid of since since mm-hmm. his parents were killed outside yeah. of alfred right yeah so so the story is sort of like him and alfred kind of pushing him later to like yeah. reestablish human connection and begins yeah. everything flows from that human connection yeah right? like it's these childhood relationships that he's plugging back into. It's this, it's caring about people that he has cared about for years. Mm-hmm. So their motivation is totally different. The the kind of the the light where where you know flashes are in the eyes and she's sort of like, oh fine. I this scared me to death as a kid when <laughs> it looks like they're gonna crash right into the side of the mountain and the door comes yeah. up and you see this expansive tunnel going in. Like that was. When I was just yeah. like, this is, this is cool. Like, this is, this is Batman. Like yeah, when yeah. I was a kid, all the way through me being a middle-aged man now, I'm just like, <laughs> Dude, that's so Batman. Batman would have a secret door. Yeah. And of course, as a little kid, 
I went back, you know, because I was watching the 66 series like yeah. it was, you know, very serious, yes. very thrilling yes. comic book material. Oh, yeah. But the sign, right, that that flips out in front of the Batcave entrance. I was like, they're doing the thing. They're doing yeah. the thing from the show that I watched. This is the this is like the cool, edgy kind of, you know, B.A. Yeah. version of yeah. what they did on that show. I just yeah. loved it. Yeah, I remember making uh, I used to have these. I don't know if you remember these, but they were it was like a building, not building blocks, but it wasn't Lego. It was called Constructs, right? Oh, yeah. It was like these gray and blue things. The, I remember the Duplo of child plastic building blocks. Yeah, pretty much. Or not Duplo. And, du uh, what's what's the Hydrox? Oreo cookie yeah, yeah, Hydrox yeah. version. <laughs> but they were cool, man. Like, so I, I used it and I made I made myself my tunnel, my Batman tunnel for my Toy Biz Batmobile. Because that was I always thought that part was so cool, man. So you cool. Know? So I'm just like, hopefully Batman has some type of sensor, though. Like, if that door doesn't come up, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> like, he hits a well, hologram. It's all. And, <laughs> and one of the things I think about, and I can't even begin to count how many times I've watched this movie, but I think about it every single time. I saw this as a very little boy, like a kindergartner, uh, with my mom in the theater. And I remember my mom, like, audibly gasping in the theater and clamped down on my forearm on the movie armchair rest next to her. Like, she <laughs> thought they were going to smash it. I'm like, they're like... <laughs> Mom, did you really think we were going to get like an hour and 10 minutes into this movie and it was going to end <laughs> with just Batman and Vicky splatted against a mountainside? Yeah. That's what you thought? Like she was very <laughs> concerned for their safety. Oh, Vicky's mom. scream brings impact. And when she screams, yeah, for sure. Brings a, you know, the, the impact of the, the batting in the of going through the, the, the door and whatnot. Yeah, Vicky's such a, a good such enough a cool... actress. No, I was, I was, I was sorry. Go, go Garrett. Go. No, Basinger's a good enough actress that she didn't end up going in no disrespect to the Scream Queens that did, that did you know, fulfill all the slasher horror movies of the 80s and 90s. But, like, her scream is so good, it's amazing she never did, like, a horror movie. Because, like, <laughs> she's pretty piercing throughout this thing. Yeah. yeah. I like that part. It, it, it flows real nice, again, in that, in that sequence that, like, whatever, we're a minute in that whole thing. You go from her... After she gets rejected with the flashlight, she that that frustration and all of a sudden, boom! Like it's it, it's it just takes you. It, it's such a good ride, you know, as you're on your way to the Batcave. So I love the, I love that whole sequence again and again. Uh, you kind of talked about it at the top, Bill. Uh, the score from Elfman right here is it's so mysterious. It's so it's mm. like the it's such a it, this scene is not going to be. The scene it is without that song. Oh, absolutely! You know, just the way it yeah. punches. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's like it's such a it's such a great piece. Like, um, all everything just working together, man. From the cinematography to you know the actors and you know the music is perfect. So, all right, so we get into the Batcave. Um, I love this scene. This is this right here. Um. When when I was a kid, I didn't you know pay attention as much to like everything else. But now that you're you can pause things, I love the scope of the Batcave. We don't really see it all because we just we really just see Bruce sitting at his back at the computer a lot. Mm -hmm. But in this scene, you actually get to see there's a lot of like catwalks to get mm -hmm. to where they're going, and there's other little instrumentations and stuff. I'm like, oh man, he's got a full on Batcave here, you know? Yeah, we don't we don't get all of it, you know? But it is kind of. It is kind of cool to see the expansiveness of it. So if you guys are watching the movie, give it a give it a pause when they hit the wide shot because it is really cool to see the the full effect of of the Keaton Batcave. It's really cool. So all right, so they pull now, in. Not only that, Justin, but I think yeah. I wonder how much of this is um, a benefit we get of modern viewers in the in the medium that we have to watch the movie today. Because I tell you what, as a kid watching this on a VHS tape. The the Burton Batcave was Batman's desk to me. It was his yeah. desk with the Batmobile on the side <laughs> yeah. because you didn't have this definition, right? Like yeah. I saw this in the theater. I think I saw it. I think I got to go to it twice, maybe. I mean, once for sure, right? And that would have been the last time I saw it in high definition uh -huh. for decades. So like when I was a kid watching this on a VHS tape, Burton's Batcave kind of stunk. It was, you know... There was a platform, there was a bridge, there was where the back the Batmobile was, and then there was the computer monitors. But when you watch it now in like 4K high definition, there's so much detail that I forgot existed for decades because I saw it yeah. when I was like, you know, a That's little a boy. Point. 
Yeah. And yeah. now you see it and you're like, oh my gosh, they really did do the set design. They really did produce yeah. this to look like a full environment and not just a poorly or a specifically lit soundstage. So I, I think yeah. we get some of that now because the technology is caught up to allow us to see it. Hey, y'all, it's Bill Ramey, founder of Batman on Film. Let's take a quick pause in this podcast for these words from our sponsor. I love Vicky as she gets out of the Batmobile. To, she she almost is a goner, man. Like he hits that light. Like Batman is, is kind of a jerk, man. He does he doesn't say watch out until the very last moment. You know he hits those lights. You know careful. But I love all the bats and uh, the you know he has that great line. You know they're great survivors. But great then survivors. For, for whatever reason he's got like one in a cage. It's like that's <laughs> it's on disciplinary action for whatever reason yeah like, <laughs> yeah too too much too much guano on the Batmobile yeah. windshield yeah. so that one's in timeout you're but it is that you're right he like it's funny you say he's got that one great line because you know keaton was really good and he's talked a lot about this and burton's talked about it how you know when keaton approached the role he's like batman should say less mm. you know like these are just too much words i'm not going to say all this he should say less and it's like the dialogue is really pretty limited, right? There's like none in the in the Batmobile. There's very little as they enter the cave. It's watch out, they're great survivors. And then he kind of has to talk a little bit more to explain, hey, but cracking mm -hmm. the code on the on that toxin profile here. But everything's really understated from Batman. It's like, what's the least amount of words you could say to get by with it? And it just works yeah. really well. Because it because it also it not only just works well for for Batman. But it keeps um, Vicky intrigued. She's not yeah. getting everything she wants. So she's driving towards something. And Batman's like metering out how much he's going to give her. It creates a really Garrett, good dynamic between the she's, two. She's descending into mystery is what yeah. she yes. <laughs> All it's, the way down. Yes. And it's such uh, he's just out of the Batmobile immediately. You know, and there's the few, yeah. the few lines that we've already mentioned, you know, uh, careful, great survivors. And then he's just he's right up the stairs right to the monitor sits down it comes up yeah. and it's right right to right to the reason why he had her there the business yeah you know to, to, uh you know tell her basically you know she even asked how did you figure this out you know yeah. um and he talked you know the, it's not one thing it's the combination to, you know lipstick and toothpaste perfume or whatever and what, hairspray. perfume yeah hairspray Under is toxic. <laughs> yeah too, i love it it's toxic <laughs> It's and it's such a it's such a there's a little bit of a flex there with Batman, right? He just it's all laid out. Here we go. Yeah. And yeah. you know, and, and again, we get back to inquisitive Vicky. She keeps doing that, like, look. Here, this whole okay, this whole scene, there's 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 two moments in this scene which shows how like uh Burton just knows how to film and light this suit. Yes. Oh my um, gosh, does he yes. ever... like Batman at the console? Uh, I mean, re I mean, his face is really obscured, but his, the way the cow is shaped, his eyes are completely out. Right? Yes, they're black. Yeah, that's how Batman needs to look in movies, like all the time. Batman should always be shrouded in mystery. I think, he's, like, especially he's hidden in shadow. When, yeah, when other, especially when like, uh, uninvolved people, like if Alfred's in the cave, okay, no need for it. But if it's a visitor or if he's around people that, you know, aren't necessarily in his close to him like gordon it's fine maybe in the early days gordon he can be shrouded from gordon but you know once they're they're pals and talking on the roof he doesn't have to be like super like uh you know shrouded out but it was so perfect the way <laughs> burton made him he's still a mystery even though she's in the it, it works the, the whole the whole get up works because she's even trying to see him and she's not going to figure yes. it out the way everything and she's right there. very i mean she's changing positions and angles yeah Try to yeah. still try to get a better look at him. Yeah. And he <laughs> just has that, that, you know, that sharp. Y'all yeah. can see me, but that's just that, you know, those short, yeah. sharp turns away. He even does and, the Batman Keaton move in the chair. Yeah. That's the thing that's funny. He just moves. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, and I think that's that's where they're utilizing. Like, yeah, there's a suit limitation. We know how the suit was made. There's a limitation. But they found a way to work it into the body mannerisms. And, like, yeah. how does this character move? It's sharp and defensive. It's like broad kind of sweeping strokes to get the cape yeah. to twirl in some scenarios. But even the, to the shape of the cowl, like how how well designed it was to sort of have those 
you know, arched brow bones that are sit up high above the mm -hmm. eyelets so that when you have downward facing lighting, you cast those shadows down across the eyes and the whole face. I'm, I'm paused on a frame right here. And it just, it's got to be right around where you were talking. The yeah. eyes are almost totally blacked out. Um, the face is really in shadow, but you can make out some facial features. But there's just a speck of light, like reflecting off Keaton's right eyeball. It yeah. looks so, it's just like a, like a little piercing white light by his pupil. And yeah. it looks really creepy, man. Like it's just yeah. so, so perfect. Yeah. The, the part. I'm oh, sorry, Justin. Go ahead. No, no, go, go, Bill. Go, Bill. I was just going to say real quick. It's like, um, you know, when he gets up out of the, the chair and turns around and is yeah. like this to the press. And then it's just that, that's that band of light right, right across his eyes where you can yep. see, I mean, you can see the blue of his eyes and, and, and you know, and it's, it's just, it's great. And then yeah, you get that I, close up, you know, with more, he just, more, more, you know, what people, you know, like, like that. That okay, that's that's the that was my next point. Was that scene that it, it reminds me of if you all seen like Bella Lugosi Dracula, there's a scene where his eyes, the, the way they light his eyes, it's like they're glowing. And I always feel like this is an homage to that. I don't know if it is with Burton, it's forcing. gotta be. He was, yeah, I'm right? sure it like is. it has to there's be. There's no way that. Burton wouldn't not. Yeah, because yeah. it, it's like the I love that scene. It's one of my favorite shots in the film because that's intentional. Like it wasn't, yeah. you know, they blocked that out. They're like, okay, we want to highlight his eyes right there. Now he's just a silhouette with eyes. That's like, you know, it, that doesn't work with lenses, guys. It yeah. just yeah. doesn't, man. Nope. And if you got Michael Keaton eyes, man, you go, you know, there it is. We need to make a song called Michael Keaton eyes, like Betty Davis eyes. Yeah, Betty Davis eyes. <laughs> yeah. Michael Keaton eyes. Come on, Garrett. Get it. I got it. Dude, for 35 years, 35 years of Batman 89, dude, make it happen. But uh, got to make it happen. Yeah, the yeah, that's totally intentional. So, what's cool about this this whole scene is, like you said this earlier, Garrett, the cat and mouse between you know Batman and Vicky Vale, and uh, you know he's he's being off putting, and she finally pushes him, like when you know, this whole like you know you're not exactly normal that triggers the man because he flips around and then he starts engaging. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean yeah. he knows yeah. what he needs to do, but all of a sudden now he's like. Like and now he becomes a really imposing and menacing figure to her. He does like, moving towards her. It's like he's like a wraith at this point. And uh, yeah, man, she's 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 now terrified. She's like, you didn't have to be here, you know? Right? Ooh, exactly. Exactly. So, like where? Like where's the? I was going to tell I was a theater kid at one point. Like <laughs> like a lot of times you talk about like in which direction is energy flowing in a scene, mm -hmm. and it is all flowing from the beginning of this from Vicky to Batman, right? She's yeah. the one that's closing in space. And then he creates space. She closes the space. He creates the space. He's being yeah. evasive. She's being, she's pursuing him. But then yeah. when she pursues him to a point, right? And it almost, it's, it's, it's when it gets personal. And I think it gets to, you know, the way Burton and Keaton saw their version of Bruce is having you know, some of these deep insecurities that fuel who the character is when she gets to you're not exactly normal, like that yeah. kind of cuts. And then the dynamic changes where he's on the offensive, he's closing space and she's yeah. backing away all the way until the scene cuts. And I, I think that energy um, helps create this sort of tension I don't know if you want to like skip ahead, right? Like, but it creates this tension where we know Batman, right? We're the audience. Yeah. We know Batman. We know his motivations, but it does create this tension of, um, you know, she's like, why'd you bring me here? You could have leaked this. And he's like, you do it. You do have something I want. And then the, the cape whips up in a way that's mm. startling and yeah. tense for the viewer when we know, right? We, we know Batman just didn't deck this lady or like attack her yeah. in any way. But the but the the dynamic between the character creates a sense of tension that carries us through to the next scene, regardless of what we know logically Batman would do or not do in that scenario. Yeah. That was that was very well explained, Garrett. Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, theater. <laughs> well, gosh, you know. <laughs> yeah, that all the that's and speaking of Dracula, like the cape, the cape like pop, that's a Dracula move right there. Yeah. Right? Totally, like, and, and the bats like like screech it and stuff. Yeah. And that was the next because that's oh. so stylistic, right? And yeah. we don't get we don't get a ton of those stylistic cuts. Like this is a very 
restrained Tim Burton. I think, and that's why, yeah. you know, like the trees and sort of um, the wildlife setting is reflective of things we would know. You can see some of that Burton DNA there, but it's not all Burton. But mm. we don't have some of these um, artistic, stylistic elements in this movie. It plays it pretty straight. But I thought when I was watching this, I thought the same thing. I'm like, the cape goes up, the cape, the, the camera zooms in, the black of the cape becomes a, a normal black background. And then from that black background emerge these bats, right? It's yeah. a, it's, it's, it's gotta be the most sort of artistic impressionistic, impressionistic um, scene cut of the entire movie. I don't, I can't think of anywhere else where we have something similar. Yeah. It, I, I like, the the briefness i guess if that's a word how brief this scene is because <clears throat> there's so much in it with so little dialogue and such a short clip but then i you almost had forgot with the batmobile traveling to the bat cave and then the inter interaction in the bat cave you almost forget because then you know the next scene which we'll get i mean that's a, another show but you know, she's at her apartment and she goes oh he took the film he and you completely film. forgot yeah. about her snapping the pictures of him that Justin and Lauer talked about in the previous, <laughs> yeah. scene, you know, and you go, Oh, cause you did. That's yeah. right. It was, you know, there was that little bit that Garrett talked about. We know Batman didn't do anything sinister to her. Yeah. Right. Probably, you know, yeah. but yeah, we didn't I mean, he probably know just what, knocked her out. I mean, he probably gave but her I a can remember yeah, a little, thinking. <laughs> You know, gas. when I watched it, I was 23 yeah. and I, I was still was thinking you know, when he said, you know, there is something you have that I want, you, you know, and he did that. I'm thinking, you know, what the, what the hell, you know, what does <laughs> yeah. she have does he wants, you know, easy there, Batman. <laughs> yeah, no Batman. Means no. And it's the film <laughs> and, and you had forgot about it. So, uh, yes. And, yeah. and it took me years when I was a little kid uh, to realize, oh, yeah, Vicky. And maybe not years, probably when I was watching it on VHS, I got it for Christmas like the next year. No, I think it came out that year. And that was a big deal that it came out that quickly. It came out, it was. In, it came out in October. October. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. My uncle got it for me. I didn't get it until Christmas. Um, and I lived out in the woods. We barely had TV channels. So I had no idea that it was released. But Vicky at that upward angle, as I don't remember who the goon is, that pulls up the mask and there's the flash. Like on that reel of film is michael keaton's bruce wayne face underneath yeah. the mask like there's yeah. a reason why he needed to get that film right yeah. it wasn't just like like you like it was it was a necessary thing he had to yeah. get his hands on those pictures yeah I, and I, nothing what, else because he's a gentleman that's yes. right here's what i remember from that whole scene because um i remember like if you, i've told the story before like i didn't get to see it until the vhs came out like yeah. so that's what happened with me but i remember watching it um, and I and I knew the story because I had all the trading cards, so I read it. And I, I just know Batman, like he rescues her, yada yada yada. But I remember my dad going, "Oh, he got the film." <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> darn right. He did. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm thinking, and I'm I'm just thinking, like, where was the film? I just didn't know where yep. the film was. <laughs> yeah, and and then you realize, oh, like you know, if you go back, like, underwire drops pocket. the film. You know, we're yeah. like, it's okay. We know where the film's at. <laughs> did you say the underwire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot so sorry yeah. vicky yeah. <laughs> sorry vicky. promise i closed my eyes yeah. <laughs> oh man yeah it's such a great scene and it just it, it, it does end with the just the, the phone call to to knox and here's here's what i i, I love knox 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 to me is one of those characters you know how you sometimes a character you create in like a film like a film or a tv show and they they move him into the comics because you know he was well loved i wish knox would have made it because one thing yeah like I think the Batman comics need is like I like when they have you know you have Gordon you have Montoya you have Bullock right you have Alfred like another supporting character would be nice because he Batman doesn't have a lot of like press players you know besides yeah. Vicky so having Knox I, I wish that's Knox interesting made it to I, I wonder yeah. that's interesting why Knox never made that transition because oh, like no. this issue yeah. with Wool yeah. or something yeah and, and the, another reason why it'd be nice is. Batman doesn't really have any doofy supporting characters. Not you know, really. you think about Superman, you got Jimmy's kind of a doof, Steve Lombard's yeah. a doof. There's like a lot of doofy characters that enter his world. And Knox is just such an overly eager puppy dog. Just, you know, 
But do, yeah. do you need me to come on over? You know, like, yeah, yeah that's just, what I was getting to. It's so, yeah. He's such he's so a eager. doof, you know, he's just so eager and desperate for attention <laughs> and recognition. Can I have a grant? You know, yeah. like, he's like, he is this puppy dog. And it it would be, there's really not any character like that in the Batman who's, comics. It'd bring it to dynamic. It. Who's that loss? Yeah, who's that <laughs> loss? Bad <laughs> tie. Yeah. It's like a headshot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, would it? Yeah. Anyways, I, I maybe there's still hope for Knox to to make it make a return. I just think that would be be better than whatever it, else they're doing in the he, comics right now. He's not in any of those <laughs> uh, not very good Batman '89 comics, is he? I I don't remember, man. Let's not talk about those. We're talking about uh, tough sled. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I read through the first ish uh, first oh. ber- um what the first one. Okay. First, first, yeah, 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 yeah. No uh, echoes. One through, you know, right through that one, and haven't, I haven't, I even, I have the the book, mm-hmm. but I haven't read it again. I don't yeah. know if I will. I don't know. And if he's I, and echoes lost me after two. I don't, and I'm like, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't think he's he in, it. in it. He just showed think. up in the the CW. Thank That's you. the only thing he showed up in. Yeah. Was they could get me back with some knocks. The crisis. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's all come on, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any any Good closing on thoughts on uh on these beautiful five minutes of film, guys? I, I just, I'll just I, say real. Go ahead, Garrett. No, I was gonna I was gonna let you close it up because I'm I, you get the you get the last word. I was just yeah. gonna say I think it's so well crafted, but it doesn't feel. It doesn't feel overly produced. It doesn't feel like yeah. they sat around and and took the painter's tape out and put X's on the floor and said, "Okay, Vicky, you move here um, yeah. now." You know, or Kim, you move here now. Michael, you're going to move here, and then Kim, you move back here. So then, remember, uh, Michael, you got to move back to the southern. It all feels like very thought through and organic, and coming from a place of what are we trying to convey in this scene? Who are these characters? What does it look like for them to come together in this scenario and in this persona for Bruce yeah. and then just sort of let it flow from an organic standpoint, but it works out so well, right? It's designed, it's purposeful, but it doesn't feel overly formulaic. They, they didn't, they didn't put it into an equation to spit out what it should look like and make it feel yeah. robotic. Um, and, and just incredible atmosphere from the designs to the music, to the, um, you know, acting direction. It's, it, it really, for such a small section of the film, it has made a massive impression on people for years. And I think it comes yeah. down to those elements. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I think this is the perfect, like, if you were like, hey, who's the Batman character? What's what's he all about? You show him this because you have a good, you have your outsider who's Vicky. And she's learning with us as we're like, who's this? He's this lone crusader in his car. You know, Batman you know, go into his like secret hideout and then. Oh, he's a he's a detective. He's intimidating, um, and he's a little nutty, right? Like you get you yeah. get you get kind of like the synthesized version of like what drives Batman, and it all happens, and you see it all happen right here. Like, oh, dude, he's got a psychosis. Like he's got some issues, but he he wants to save us. He's a detective. He, he you know he's got a cool car. He's got this really crazy hideout. Like all these things that we that we love about Batman, there's all in this scene. And We're there. And it and it and it's punctuated by amazing visuals and like probably one of the like besides besides the 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 Batman uh, the Elfman theme like na 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 like this is the other like music Stand that out. people that stands out to to this film so that was perfect all right Bill take us home I I, I have that's right very little that that's right I have very little <laughs> add other than I, it just Keaton in the eyes. Yeah, it just stand out to me, and there's no doubt in my mind that Pattinson, Robert Pattinson, watched this because you can see him doing a lot of that eye eye work when he played yeah. Batman in the Batman. And I think one other thing I would add is that the audience we know Batman is Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne is Batman. Vicky doesn't know we had that privilege, and yeah. there's a little bit of like you know it's okay you've 
you've already hooked up with Bruce Wayne. It, you know, this is the guy here. Yeah, don't, don't, right. yeah. You know what I'm saying? We know we're in, we we're on the inside with Batman. So there's a little bit of that, of like her trying to figure him out, but, and there's like, you know, y'all kind of are dating kind of sort of whatever you want to call <laughs> you it. You have Bruce known Wayne, one Wayne. another. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's that little element there too. Um, you know, especially with the, uh, you do have something else that I won't, you know, with that. So, yeah. um, I think I like the, like the audience is on the inside of this mm-hmm. one, but we're looking at from the Batman point of view, and we get to see Vicky trying to figure it out. Well, we know we're like, well, we already know he's Batman, so we're cool. Yeah, yeah, good stuff, guys. All right, well, we are gonna we're gonna put a, a little pin in uh, our chapter by chapter right now, Garrett. Thank you for joining us today, Bill. Thank you for uh, opening up the doors for us to to do this. Garrett, tell people love, love these. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm trying trying to. We're back on the saddle right now. We're back on All the right. saddle. We're getting thirty five right. years. It's like, yeah, I close this thing out this calendar year. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> yes. I know, I know, I know. Woo! All right, Garrett, take us home. Take us. Uh, where where are you at? Where, you, where what are you doing? Tell us people how to find you. Oh gosh, you can. Uh, easiest way to interact with me is over on. I guess it's just X now, but I still say Twitter. Um, handle over there is at Garrett Wado. That's G-A-R-R-E-T-W-A-T-O. Talk a lot of Batman over there, but you'll get a whole bunch of other stuff because Lord knows I don't have enough various interests. Uh, uh, hopefully you like NFL football if you're going to follow me because you're going to get plenty of that, especially as we mm-hmm. gear up to the upcoming season. You know, Superman talk. There's a He-Man movie in the works, allegedly, <laughs> again. So a little Masters of the Universe chat and uh, I don't know, various music conversations. Uh, if you like hearing me talk and you want to hear me talk about fantasy football, um, that'd be great. I got a show uh, looking at fin- fantasy football along with a buddy of mine, Matt Renshaw. We're called Dynasty Dads. That's at Dynasty Dads, all one word. Um, yeah, but hit me up. I'm a chatty guy. I'd love to chat with you. Awesome. Bill. Batman on film. That's it. Batman dash on dash film.com. That's all I got. There you guys go. Uh, you can find me on X, Justin M. Kowalski. There you go. And then uh, you'll probably see me next on chapter by chapter. That's where I'll be. Unless uh, Pete gets me on something. <laughs> well, <I'll see. laughs> we're going to. Oh, you you here shortly we're gonna do a social hour maybe yeah we're gonna do a social hour week, soon. maybe i don't know we'll talk about it so yeah we'll see we'll see uh, we, me, me and bill will be on a social hour and um we're gonna we're gonna have a big do group the big do guru. <laughs> i just love that term the big he's guru. at home washing his tights <laughs> we're not there yet garrett oh no man sk- no, there, no skipping ahead I've got a few scenes that I'm going to bug you to get on. So maybe yeah, listeners yeah. can catch hey. me on this, sh- this show in the future too. The door, the door is open, man. The door is open. So, all right, you, you can uh, do all that. Follow everybody. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys are subscribing and checking out all the shows because I'll tell you, man, one of, one of my favorite things to do is when I'm doing chores, my, my BOF feed uh, carries me through the day. Mostly, man, <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of good shows 100%. that come on. So you'll, you'll get the social hour. You'll get like a regular standard show. You'll get an animation show. You'll get one of these. And so, uh, and yeah, we just talked like- about uh, an episode from the Batman 2004. It's when, when Red Hulk was the was yeah, yeah. Yes, villain <laughs> the Red- on, on that episode. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a choice right there. They were trying to like play with the color palette. They're like, we need to throw yeah. something in there. So, yeah. yeah. Woo-wee. All right, guys. Thank you guys for, for listening. Uh, Batman on film. Authoritative, definitive. The Dad Gum Original. Dad Gum Original. All right. There you go. I was so I can't I can't say that, but I'll just say the original. <laughs> like, okay. I'm not I'm not further. I need to go a little more east for me to be able to say Dad Gum. I just tell him Pete. <laughs> do it. All right. All right, guys. Announcer Rachel will take us out. You have been listening to Batman on Film Chapter by Chapter, a BatmanOnFilm.com podcast revisiting the cinematic adventures of the Dark Knight, scene by scene, chapter by chapter. Follow Jet on Twitter at BatmanOnFilm. For BOF news only, follow at the BatmanOnFilm on Twitter. To become a BOF patron, go to Patreon.com slash BatmanOnFilm. To advertise on BOF, visit AdvertiseCast.com slash BatmanOnFilm. For Jet and Team BOF, I'm announcer Rachel. Authoritative, definitive, the original. 
Batman on Film, established in 1998.